Spirit to fill this morning, and we ask you to continue to be with us uh, in the message as Pastor Steve uh, brings us a word this morning, and we ask that you just uh, be his, uh, let him be your mouthpiece, and just every word that he says that it just be from you, and let us be ready to uh, accept what it is you have for us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Church. Today's scripture reading is out of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, starting in verse 10. It says this, And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry, in heart, for the goodness that the Lord had shown unto David, and to Solomon, and to Israel, his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house, he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. This is the day that the Lord has made Lord, we just want to be glad and rejoice in it. God, I pray right now that you would be with Brother Steve, hide him behind the cross, give him the words to speak this morning. All who are listening, whether in the parking lot, whether on Facebook, whenever you watch this video, God, I pray that their ears will be attentive to what has been said by you today. God, we thank you so much. It's your son's name that we pray. Well, it all started about 15 years ago. It started with me driving down the street and coming up to the stop sign. And when I got to the stop sign, everything started spinning. I had no clue what was going on other than I knew something wasn't right. Shortly thereafter, I come home and I'm sitting down in a chair. And as I'm sitting there with my family in the chair, it really feels like someone had grabbed a hold of the chair and started spinning me around and around and around. Felt like I was going 60, 70 miles an hour, nonstop. Started getting sick at my stomach. Started wondering what is going on and what's wrong with me. From that point on, we knew that there was something wrong and I started going to the doctor. Trying to figure out what exactly is happening with me. What's going on? As I go to the doctor, they run all kinds of tests. They turn me upside down. They put liquid in my ears. They try all these different things, and they couldn't find out exactly for sure what was wrong. Then I noticed some other things was happening. Believe it or not, I'm a pretty calm guy. I'm an introvert. I usually take things pretty easy. I think them through before I react, at least up until this time. Now, all of a sudden, I was reacting to things differently. I was becoming quite irritable with my family. In fact, since then, it probably hasn't gotten a whole lot better. But I started becoming irritable at little things and started losing my temper and saying things like I had never done before. And so my wife tells me she knew something was going on but couldn't figure it out. Finally, I knew there was something major wrong when one day I was a youth pastor at the time in Virginia. One day I'm sitting down and I don't even remember what I was doing at the computer. I don't know if I was preparing a game, a slideshow for the youth, or preparing a message. But as I'm sitting there and uh, typing away, all of a sudden everything it seems like just goes blank. I just sit there for several minutes wondering what's going on. Why am I not thinking straight? 
I couldn't think of anything. After what seemed like ages, but was probably only about five or ten minutes, I come back to it and I realize I had been sitting there just thinking blank thoughts and doing nothing for several minutes. I just completely blacked out. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew this, that I was the patient. I had a problem, and I needed a physician to tell me what was wrong. And once diagnosed, I received a prescription. Now, some of you may know exactly what this feels like. Maybe you had other symptoms. But I started finding out a little bit more about my thyroid and how the thyroid gland changes a lot of things for you if it stops working or isn't working well, or in some cases, for some people, their thyroid gland works way too well. I have what is called hypothyroidism. And so I was given the diagnosis of hypothyroidism, and the doctor gave me a prescription. A prescription for Synthroid, or the generic name, Levothyroxine. I never thought up until that time that I would ever need a pill for anything. I thought I was going to live the rest of my life without taking any medication. But I can tell you something. This little blue pill here, if I do not take it in the morning, especially if I don't take it for a couple days, my family will know. I know. I can feel my blood pressure rise when it's not the right thing. If it's not the right dosage, if I haven't taken it, if I've taken it at the wrong time, it controls so much in the body. But I needed a physician to tell me what was wrong and to prescribe for me exactly what I needed. Second Chronicles 714. Many of us have probably heard sermon after sermon on this. In fact, if you've been on Facebook or listening to any other pastors right now, it seems to be like every once in a while something happens in our nation where this becomes the megaverse. And once again, I've heard this verse shared so many times. I am actually, whenever there's a popular verse like that, I'm kind of a rebel. You know, what would Jesus do movement? I was like, everyone's preaching that, so I'm going to stay away from it. Not that I had a problem with it, but I wasn't someone that would just fall into what everyone else was doing, whatever the tradition was, whatever the big thing was, let's talk about that. Prayer of Jabez, I stayed away from it. Purpose-driven church, I stayed away from it. Not that I disagreed with it, but that's just, I guess, how I rebel. And so whenever it comes to 2 Chronicles 7.14, I believe, I may be wrong, I believe this may be my first sermon on it, and I believe the Holy Spirit wanted me to share this scripture with you this morning. It's been preached many times before. It's been looked at as God's prescription for healing for a land or for a nation. If you have your Bibles, look at it again with me in 2 Corinthians 7, 14, where the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The first thing I want to look at here this morning isn't some of the things that you might think I would go to first. But I first want to go to the prescription. Let's talk about the prescription. Our sermon series right now is Good Medicine. And I believe the Word of God is good medicine for the soul. With the things that we have going on through our world, we need to open up the Word of God and see what the Bible has for us. It's God's good medicine. And so if we're going to pay attention to the prescription, we need to read the instruction label well. First things first. Whenever I first started getting it, I didn't realize I was taking it the wrong way. Whenever I started taking it the way that the instructions told me to take it, then things got better. I mean, there's a few things on here that says things like this. I mean, on the very front it says, take one tablet by mouth every day. Now, if I just take that by what it says, and I don't read any further what's on the label, then I'm going to believe that I can take that anytime during the day, and that I would take one tablet. Well, yeah, it is one tablet, but if you read a little bit further, if you go off to the side, there's some more instructions. My instructions here say this, take this medicine on an empty stomach. Well, that matters. 
if you don't take it on empty stomach, it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. You read a little bit farther and it says, preferably take this medicine a half hour to one hour before breakfast. So for me, it's very specific. It ought to not be on a full stomach or I ought not have anything in my stomach. In fact, the best time to take that one pill a day is to read on beyond the initial prescription and to notice that it says to do what? To take it before breakfast. Why is this important? I believe, and I've said it before, you need to be careful whenever you read the Word of God. Be careful that you're not taking the words of God out of context. Read everything that's there. Know exactly what the Word of God is saying. And is it to you? And if it is, how you're supposed to apply it to your life. Because your instructions are specific from God. And so whenever we're reading this scripture, I believe sometimes we may take this scripture out of context. We need to read the label. But what does it say? This is one of the main points. The prescription from the Word of God for those whose land needs to be healed is this. They shall humble themselves. That's going to be my main sermon today. Humble yourselves. It's very important. If you humble yourselves while these struggles are going on, while the hard times are going on, then you will pray. But don't miss the first part. Don't miss the part about humbling yourself. You've got to be at the place where you realize, I don't have it all together. I cannot do this on my own. I have to humble myself. And if I humble myself, then I will pray. Then I will seek God's face as long as I'm in control. As long as I think I have it all together. As long as I think, hey, I don't need God and everything's okay. Then why would I pray? Why would I call upon his name if everything is going well? And quite often we may find ourselves this way in our Christian lives. How often do we treat God like a vending machine? We come to him just whenever there's a problem. And we expect him to give us exactly what we want when we want it. But we've got to start out with what? Humbling ourselves before God. And if you humble yourselves, you'll pray. Then you'll seek God's face. And then you're going to turn away from your wicked ways. Because you'll realize that that puts something between you and God. And you don't need that something between you and God. Your sin is part of the problem. And by humbling yourself, you're able to pray and call out to God and realize it's Him that you need. You start seeking His face when you realize that your ways are failing. When you realize how awful you are and how horrible your sin is and how it keeps you from God and how it continues to mess up your life, then you will do what? Then you'll seek God. You'll realize you don't have it all together. The prescription is humbling yourself. Let me tell you, what we need right now as Christians is we need some humbling. We need to realize it's not about ourselves. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it a hundred times before we meet back together again. And that is this. I pray when we come back to the church inside the building that we are not the same people as when we left. Because let's be honest, a lot of us, when we came to church, it was about who? It was about us. It was about ourselves. Now, I've said before, there's a good part about that. The Bible does say that the church is there to do what? To encourage us, to help keep us on the right path. We need to be discipled, yes? But that doesn't happen just within the four walls of the church. That's supposed to be happening on your own. You're supposed to be in the Word of God yourself each and every day, realizing that you need Him, not just on Sunday morning, but all week long. And when you come on Sunday morning, yes, you might get encouraged. Yes, you will be discipled. Yes, your life may be transformed within these four walls. But let's be honest, many of us, whenever it even comes to meeting again, we're selfish. I can't wait to get a hug. I can't wait to, for someone to listen to my story. Are we coming back to be servants? Are we coming back to listen? Will there be more volunteers than ever to work with the children once we're able to meet with the children again? Will there be more people that want to greet at the door? Will there be more hallelujahs? Will there be more raised hands? Will we really be changed? Let me ask, whenever you come to church, do you come humbly serving others? 
Or you're wanting everything to be the way you want it. And you want everyone to pay attention to you. What a church we could be if we paid attention to God and each other rather than ourselves. Yes, the prescription is what? We need to humble ourselves. Well, who is the prescription for? Who is the patient? Well, let's identify the patient. Right here on the label, it says Stephen T. Hinkle. And then it has my address, just in case there's more than just one Stephen Hinkle at my Walgreens. The prescription is very clear. So we've got to ask ourselves, whenever we preach 2 Chronicles 7.14, who was that written for? And what does it have to do with us? We ought to ask ourselves that all the time. Don't just take it out of context. By the way, just because a prescription is good for one person at a certain do dosage doesn't mean it's the same for someone else. And so whenever we read this, we read the scripture and it says this about the patient. If my people, which are called by my name, if my people, which are called by my name, if you humble yourselves, which will then get you to pray and seek my face to turn from your wicked ways, if my people who are called by my name will do this, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. This prescription isn't going to work for just anyone. Now, don't get me wrong. I think you'll understand in just a minute. To be clear, these are God's words spoken to Solomon, the king of Israel. The land or the nation here that is being referred to was the land of Israel. So can Christians in America find any appropriate application from this text? Is this a prescription for us as well? Well, of course. But don't miss this. Don't miss the prescription of humbling yourselves. Don't miss the humble yourselves part. This prescription is for God's children, specifically the Israelites, but we can learn from it. Don't forget what Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to who? To everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Man, something amazing about Jesus Christ and his salvation is it is available to each and every person who is willing to what? Humble themselves. Willing to repent of their sin. Realize that they are in need of a savior and a king. And they turn from their wicked ways. They trust Jesus Christ as their savior. That is just as much available to you today as it was to the Jews. In fact, the Bible lets us know, yes, the Jews, the children of Israel, they were God's children. However, what does he tell us? That we can be adopted into his family. That he died also for us. And through salvation, we can know that he is our king and he is our savior. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved. So yes, whenever the scripture tells us here that we need to humble ourselves and seek his face, this scripture can be talking to anybody who is a born again believer. But I want us to notice something here. Paul, in his scripture here, wanted to humble both the Jew and the Greek. That's the reason he said what he did. He wanted the Jews to be humble to know this isn't just about you. But he also wanted the, uh, the Greeks to know that they were included in God's plan. He made them, Paul, through this statement, deeply aware that they needed to depend entirely on the mercy of God. In other words, what they need to do, whether they were Jew or Greek, no matter what their nationality was, they needed the same Savior, and they needed to humble themselves. God's kingdom, everyone who believes, it was about God's kingdom. And so this verse, it can speak to us. It speaks to us, those who are part of his kingdom. If we humble ourselves, then he can and will Humble, he will what? Heal our land. So let's come back to the prescription of humble yourselves. One thing you can rule out, and the scripture says this about the sal our salvation, it's not of ourselves. Why? Lest any man should boast. 
Our salvation is not by the good that we do. It's by what he did, Jesus Christ, on the cross. That's what we believe. That's what we know. That's what we have our identity in. Our identity is in his kingdom and in his power. That also means this. This scripture, I'm sorry, is not about America. Yes, it can be applied to Christians in America. But let's be careful not to make this scripture only about America. Let's be careful about this idea. Now, I know what some people are saying, and some of you are going to like this. But let's be careful about this idea of America first. No, God first. And if we put God first and we humble ourselves and we obey what he tells us to do, we're going to find out what? God tells us to fall in love with him and to fall in love with other people. You see, falling in love with ourselves isn't the problem. That's our sin. That's our pride. That's our selfishness. And so if we are truly followers of God, whether we live in America or any other nation, we need to humble ourselves, realize who we are in God, and that we are not better than anyone else, and we are to do what? Love God and love other people. We need to humble ourselves. Even Christians in America who think we've got all the answers and we've got it together and God's going to bless us because we are in America. No, God's going to bless us because he gives his mercy to the humble. I believe what we need as Christians and what we need in America and what we need in the world is a people who are humble, a people that realize where they stand whenever they come and look at a Savior who is perfect, a King who is perfect. We've got to humble ourselves. You've got to understand who the patient here is. The prescription is to humble yourselves. The patient are those who have humbled themselves and realize that it's only by God's mercy that we get any of this. Don't miss the problem, though. Right now, I believe in our world, we've got a problem, don't we? We don't know exactly what that problem is. We all have different viewpoints. I believe we all have different viewpoints because even those who claim to know it all are still trying to figure it out. They don't understand this virus. You know, I don't know that it's necessarily everything is a conspiracy that's going on. I believe there's just a lot of confusion. It's the reason we need to pray for our president. It's the reason we need to pray for our world. Because there are a lot of confused people trying to do what? Figure this all out. And yeah, there are those who will play one side or play the other side. But let me make something very clear here. And that is this. We have a problem. But there is something bigger than that problem. And we are given a prescription. And if we follow this prescription, we are going to find healing. Don't miss this. Verse 13. Again, don't take everything out of context. We notice verse 13, and by the way, it's not necessarily, again, talking about America. But we can't apply this. The Bible is there to help us. Look what verse 13 says. If there comes a time that God shuts up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, he said, or if I send pestilence among my people. There's a problem here. He said, if any of these things happen, if there's a virus, if there's a pestilence, if there's locusts devouring the land, if there's something destroying your crops, if there's no rain, if there's something like that that's going on, then you have a problem. And that problem quite often is what? Our wake-up call. Our wake-up call that what? We are not in control. You know what I believe this virus is all about? At least partially? is to remind us as Christians, remind us as a world, remind us as a church, remind us as a nation that we are not in control. We do not have everything under control, but God does. And he's given us prescription. He's given us good medicine in the word of God. When the time comes that something beyond your control gets your attention, then what do you do with it? Yeah. Something that was out of my control got my attention. I was dizzy. I was blanking out. My anxiety was out of control. I was quite irritable. And that woke me up to know I've got a problem and it needs to be fixed. 
Oh, woe to us if we go through all this and we don't wake up. Oh, woe to us if we don't realize in all of this that, hey, maybe having a lot of money saved up, it'll do us good for a short time, but it's not about the money. It's about our God. It's about humbling ourselves. It's about us realizing that we are in need of something beyond this world and that we trust Him. We trust Him. And so these things that we go through, these problems get us to do what? Get us to move beyond ourselves, to humble ourselves, to realize we don't have the answer. So what do we do when something catches our attention, when things get out of our control? Well, most human beings and most Christians, we do the same thing. We try to figure it out. We try to make something happen. But let's fix this on our own. Let's repair it. Let's try to control it. Let's fret if that doesn't work. Let's be anxious if that doesn't work. We're losing control. Sometimes losing control is the best place for us to be. Because it's then that we humble ourselves and we pray. We seek His face. And we wake up and we turn from our wicked ways. And we realize, God, we cannot do this on our own. It's not about selfishness. It's not about what we deserve. It's about what He wants to give us. It's about His mercy and His grace. But we have to humble ourselves. we got to realize that we're the patient and we're in need of God. There's a problem that makes you realize you need God. And then, and then, there's the physician. The physician. We are given the great physician. And can I remind you, he is on call 24-7. Anytime you want him, anytime you need him, you can call upon him. All you got to do is humble yourself and realize, yeah, you don't have control and you don't have it all figured out. Hey, we don't know what's going to happen in upcoming months, but what if things don't get better? What if things get worse? What if things get more out of control? What if our economy really gets way messed up? What if the government turns on the church? What if we have to go into hiding? What if Christians begin to be persecuted? Now, I pray to God that doesn't happen, but will your anxiety be high? Or are we going to trust in Him? Have you humbled yourself? Do you believe in Him? Do you know that He's in control? Are you trying to control it all yourself? There's going to be Become something in your life that's going to be beyond your control. Why don't you just let God now? Let things go now. Don't depend so much on your job. Don't depend so much on other people. Don't depend so much on your looks and your fame. Don't depend so much on your talent. Don't depend so much on your bank account. Don't depend so much on all these things. Start humbling yourselves and depend on God. And if you do so, you'll pray, you'll seek His face, you'll turn from your wicked ways, and He will bring healing. He is the great physician. I love Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2 verses 15 through 17 tell us this. When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. You know what he's saying right there? He's saying those who think they have it all together or they've got it all under control, they don't need me. It's those of us who humble ourselves and realize who we really are not and that we need the grace of God. They are the people who will be healed. They are the people who will find blessing. They are the people who will have an eternal home in heaven who does not trust in themselves but trust in the great position. And the great physician, like I said, he's on call 24-7. Pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways, and he will hear. And he'll give you exactly what you need. He will bring healing. The prescription is to humble ourselves, pray, seek our face, and turn from our wicked ways. And then the healing will come. 
Where are you this morning? What are you going through? Do you sometimes sit late at night, maybe right before you go to bed, and wonder what tomorrow might bring? You know what the Bible says about that? You have a great position, but worry about tomorrow. He's giving you your prescription. Humble yourself. Realize you don't have control. You don't have it all together. Get on your knees. Call out to him. Seek his face. Quit turning to everything else but God. And then he will hear from heaven and will heal our land. That's my prayer for each and every one of us. Father, we thank you so much for this morning that you've given us. Thank you for those who are out in the parking lot with us this morning. God, thank you for those who are watching from here in Arkansas on Facebook. I thank you for those friends and loved ones who are watching all across the United States. God, I ask that you would take these words that we learned today, and that you would challenge us, that you would help us realize how much we are in need of you. God, help us look at the problem and say, God, I don't have it all together. Help us humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. It's then that we will find healing. Now that's good medicine. Thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen.